Welcome to The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Yuva, and today we're going to get some insight on admissions and essays. So my guest today is Carol Barish, and she's the CEO and founder of Story2, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, no problem. So Carol, I usually start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where did you go? So, so I went to Yale. Okay. Uh, my parents were first-generation college students. Okay. They both went to Penn State. Uh, never left State College, so I grew up in a college town, and uh, all I ever wanted to do was leave that college town and go uh, north and east um, from central Pennsylvania. So uh, I was really happy and lucky to, right. to go to Yale, yeah. All right, so, so um, let's go back in time. Where did you start your high school career? Was it in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I went to uh, State College Area High School which was a pretty amazing high school. If you think about um, a public high school affiliated with a great state university, mm -hmm. there were lots of uh, teachers who had PhDs and who were really exceptional teachers. So it was a really, really great high school. Oh. So what's the process that you took uh, to go on to Yale University? So um, the first thing you should know is that when I was a junior in high school, February of my junior year, uh, my father died of cancer. And the day before he died, he told me, you know, a girl can go anywhere now. Mm. And a Jew can go anywhere now. Oh. And when my parents went to college, that really wasn't the case. And um, he said, I may not be there you know, to see you, but just remember, you can go anywhere. You can go to Harvard, you can go to Yale, wow. aim high. And so I had this very strong sense of like, you know, my father wanted me to do this and my mother too, um, who was 42 years old and running a family business to keep everybody, you know, going. Um, it was a tough time. Wow. And I really thought for the longest time I was going to go to Smith. Like I love Smith. Uh, all the like older girls in our neighborhood went to women's colleges. Um, but when I was applying to college, it was the, you know, it had been about a decade of uh, women in the Ivy League and the small liberal arts colleges. And it was the first year there wasn't a quota for women hmm. at many of the Ivy League universities. So, so did you start as a junior or as a senior looking at Ivy League schools? Ah, so I started... Um, <laughs> the, the summer after my junior year, okay. my mother and I went to visit colleges. I uh, got to know a lot about one another and about those colleges. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a funny thing. I, in those days, I applied to maybe six colleges, a few uh, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Smith, Wellesley, Mount Holyoke. Wow. And, uh, uh, and Northwestern, and it's kind of funny, I didn't get into Northwestern. I, I still don't know why, but <laughs> it's one of those random things about college admissions. Things don't always, you know, sure. not always rational. Yeah. So, so now, uh, uh, I guess Yale University uh, accepted you. Um, so you just picked that school and just said, okay, this is where I'm going to go, and, and that's it? I went to visit uh, Yale and Smith again, Okay. and it was really a tough choice, the choice between a women's college and um, a co-ed big university, small town, big city, uh, but I, I really had always been attracted to cities. I think it was, even though New Haven was really gritty and tough at the time, I liked the idea of an, you know, going to college in an urban environment. So now you're at Yale University. Uh, when did you start thinking about Story 2 as, uh, you know, building it up or, or starting to think about what it does? Uh, so that's very, you know, relatively recent, 2008. I, from undergraduate, I got a master's in English at the, um, at the University of Virginia. I got a PhD in English from Princeton wow. and uh, was for about seven years, I was a professor at the University of Michigan and then Rutgers. At Rutgers, I was one of the faculty advisors to the admissions committee at Douglas College and the women, former women's college of, uh, of Rutgers University. And I read thousands of applications. And I saw how, you know, you're looking at 
pieces of paper, you're deciding people's fate just based on numbers. And there were times when people just popped off the page. You know, their story was so good, mm. uh, so memorable that it really, there's still some that stick with me. And uh, when I left Rutgers and went into uh, humanities computing, an, another job at Princeton, uh, I started working with students independently on their college essays. Mm. And I, over many years, worked with many students. And uh, in 2008, when the economy crashed, I was the director of development and marketing at Macaulay Honors College at the City University of New York, a great tuition-free premier honors college at CUNY. Wow. And when the economy crashed, I mean, in an instant, our students couldn't get internships, they couldn't get interviews, they couldn't get wow. jobs. And the dean said to me, uh, well, you're in charge of marketing, Carol. This is a marketing problem. Fix it. Uh, and I had just read Daniel Pink's book, A Whole New Mind, and there's a chapter in there about storytelling and the power of storytelling long after you forget facts and figures, you remember people's stories. Uh, brought in a professional storyteller. Uh, they, we worked together to create a workshop for our students and our alumni. And when our kids stopped using their resumes like armor and started really revealing who they were as people, they had much completely different outcomes in, in the job market. And they also got to know one another. So it was a really uh, extremely moving experience. Uh, I told the story to my son, who was a sophomore at Princeton at the time. And uh, Zach said to me, uh, he said, you know, Mom, this is your chance to get back into teaching. He said, you know, kids hate to talk about themselves. Sure. But you could teach you could teach kids to tell their stories. You could help a lot of people. And it was late at night, and we stayed up, and we mapped out a business plan. And a couple weeks later, I, I left Macaulay and started doing the research that became the company Story 2. So Story 2, does it develop um, essays for students? Uh, is that what you're working with? So we never write students' essays. We never edit students' essays. What we've developed over the past five years is a proprietary methodology and curriculum where we can, uh, we can teach students, teachers can teach students, and students can teach themselves a storytelling-based uh, method hmm. for finding stories from their own experience, telling them out loud, and transforming them into college admission and scholarship essays. Really? So now, to the parents out there that, that have these kids that are in high school, um, how, do they, how do they get started with something like this? Where do they go? So story2, the number two dot com, uh, we're happy to help them. Uh, I think that for parents, I would say uh, trust your children. I think there's a lot of parents who are very scared and parents who respond to that fear about the trans, just really shifting college landscape by trying to manage the process for their children or even trying to manage their children, you know, shape them into some idea of what they think is going to get into some college or other. Uh, and I think that the college process is a tremendous opportunity for students to figure out who they are, mm -hmm. figure out what matters to them, what difference they want to make in the world and to learn how to manage a big project that takes place over many months on their own. Uh, so I would urge uh, parents to listen, you know, ask good questions, and then like, bite their tongue and be quiet. Sure. And uh, let, let the process unfold you know, as their students, as their children are ready. So what is the admissions process? What, what do families go through to get up to that essay part? So I think that the admissions process has become very stressful for a lot of people. In its simplest form, the student presents a kind of academic portfolio, their portfolio of activities and achievements and awards, and the role of the essay is really to reveal their character, to show who they are as a person. When they show up uh, on a college campus, what uniquely shows up 
with them. Right. Now, what is a good essay at the college level? So uh, I would say a good essay, uh, a good essay is an essay that shows something about who you are. A great essay, you know, a, an, an A plus essay uh, is an essay that really reveals your spirit. Something that you have figured out or that you're committed to that cost you something. You know, it wasn't a lesson that you turned a page and you learned the next lesson, but something that you really uh, wrestled with, not in the sense of, you know, some people think I have to have had this big life-changing problem, but really something that reveals who you are uniquely as a person. It might be a dinner with your family. You know, there's lots of different, it doesn't have to be some lightning came down and the world changed story, but something <laughs> that really reveals your voice, reveals your character, uh, shows something about you that's really uniquely you. So, so a parent doesn't have to have their son or daughter write about world peace or you know how global warming is going to take over or whatever is going to happen. There's nothing like that 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 colleges want to hear. They don't want to hear that kind of stuff. No, you know, a lot of students think they're supposed to write about their big ideas, right? But there's a lot of really horrible college essays that take place in the student's brain. Great essays happen in the real world. They, they have a, a story at the heart of them. And when we say there's a story, when you tell a story out loud, three things happen in your brain. Mm -hmm. Your memories are triggered, the emotions that are associated with those memories are triggered, and you want to take action. And the person who hears your story or reads your story, those same three things happen in their brain at the same time. It's our most primitive and powerful form of human connection through, it's, it's our most strongest form of communication. So when you, re you tell a story from the perspective of this happened to me, first of all, nobody can take issue with it because it's your life, right? right. Your ideas they can disagree with, but your life is your life. Right. Uh, and it will trigger something unique in the reader. It'll, you'll create a connection with them. So the more you can go into the reservoir of your experience, and speak honestly from your unique perspective, uh, the, the better you'll do. So a few examples might be maybe a student making a team or a vacation that they took or something like that, right? So I would say if you're an athlete, write about something other than athletics because your athletic accomplishments are going to show up somewhere else. Okay. If you're a musician, don't write about what music means to you. I mean, how perhaps you came to have the commitments you have to music, or maybe you've done uh, service through music. Mm. But again, your ideas about music probably happen in your head. You know, the big game you won when you won the, the you know, the winning touchdown is really a cliche. Um, I tell students, okay, so of all the quarterbacks, what makes you different from all the quarterbacks? <laughs> of all the first chair violins, you know, if because you're really... In college admissions, you're being compared to students who are very much like you. Yeah. And so you need to stand out among, uh, as yourself, among people who are pretty similar. So what is the process at the college level? They just get all of these applications that come in. What's the process that, that colleges go through? So at most colleges, it's really a two-step process. And the first cut is is the students who are academically qualified. And if you're not academically qualified, there's no essay in the world that's going to help you become academically qualified. That's your grades, your, your standardized tests. Colleges want to see that you've challenged yourself, mm -hmm. uh, that at your high school you've taken the most challenging courses. Maybe you've taken courses at a community college or a local university or online. Um, that you're not just doing stuff for grades, but really learning. So the first is really, you know, are you academically qualified? Are you academically engaged? If you make that cut, then everything else kicks in. And then they're building a community. So. And then is there any type of um, hooks that colleges look at more? Something maybe like, like sports or music or something like that. If that. Is that added plus for the student? So college admissions officers are building a community. So if they have an orchestra, they got to fill that orchestra. And if they have a football team, they got to fill the football team and cheerleaders and a mascot. And, 
you know, the band. So all of those things uh, really kick in. I mm. think students sometimes uh, really do too many things. I think in, in the 21st century, it's better to do a few things really well yeah. uh, with a sort of entrepreneurial spirit of making a difference and making things happen and leading rather than just showing up. More stuff on your resume that you didn't lead or you didn't make a difference, I don't think it really helps. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. So um, when a student, a student in high school is uh, looking at colleges, what are some of the processes that they have to take uh, when looking at these colleges? So the good thing is absolutely everything you need is online. There are many really, really uh, good, great websites for um, just kind of assessing the landscape. There's uh, Zinch, uh, there's Big Future from the College Board, a site I really like called uh, College Data, which gives you exactly what every single college, what criteria they use in their particular admissions algorithm. So there's no secrets anymore. It's really out there. You know what test scores you need to have, you know what uh, grades you need to have, you know whether a certain school values leadership or not, community service or not. Uh, if you're willing to put in the time, I think that it, it's all really there. So it's up, to, it's up to the student that really they should do some research on the schools. They should do a lot of research on the schools. They're going to spend four years there or more, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, they should know how much financial aid they'll qualify for. That's available at every college's website. It's the law. Um, and if they can't find it for some reason, you can check it. Every college you can check out at the FAFSA website, the government website. Uh, and they should really look at things like class size mm. and support services. If you are anxious or depressed, will you get the, the service you need? If you have trouble in your calculus class, will, where do you find the tutors? Uh, if you come up uh, a credit short, you realize you know, it's a semester till graduation, and you have, do you know, even know who to talk to? Is that person even visible or available? Mm. Like some schools make sure those services are really visible and available. Middlebury is an example. You know, you, you can't fall between the cracks at Middlebury. It's, uh, um, you know, Princeton. If you get into Princeton, Princeton will get you through Princeton. But not every place is like that. Really not. And I think it's, it's wise to know what you need, how you learn. Lots of students just drop out of college because they can't get through those big gateway lecture courses at big universities. Like, like really look at what college is going to be like and uh, make sure you're ready. So how early does a, does a high school student, you know, when do they start researching this, in ninth grade or do they start a senior year? So I think that in the, the best of all possible worlds, students, if you live near colleges, if you're a parent and you li just show up on a Sunday afternoon, just walk through and on a spring, a day like today, walk through and look at the flowers and look at the happy students in a very casual way, you know, middle school, grade school. This is, you know, after high school, this is what most people do. This is what some people do. This is what we did. Uh, and just kind of make it visible. Um, I, I don't think you need to visit a bazillion colleges and maybe not any till you're really a ju maybe a junior in high school. But I think it's important for students to start to think about how they learn, what they want to study, what kind of work they want to do. Like that personal work of personal exploration is more important than which college, which specific college you're going to. Because mm. we all know people hugely successful in life who didn't graduate from college or went to a college most people never heard of. I mean, success in college and success in life aren't equal. And, you know, getting into college is a lot about being good at school. And right. even being good at school isn't about being good at life. So there's many paths to a life of meaning and a life of, of making a difference. Interesting. So, so the parents, what kind of involvement do the parents have with their, with their sons and daughters? Because there are a lot of parents out there that uh, put the burden on their sons and daughters. Um, what kind of involvement do those parents need to do? So I think the, 
I, I should say, you know, my kids are 26, 24, and the youngest is 21. She's still in college. Uh, and some lessons I've learned, you know, from making my own mistakes. Kids don't learn when they get pushed and pressured and threatened and <laughs> bullied. And um, it, I think it's very important to, as a parent, to learn how to ask good questions and then really to listen. And as you get close to senior year, talk about things other than college. You know, just have a, just a college-free zone, whether it's the car or the kitchen or when you're walking the dog together. Just have some rituals that are something else. Because once that, um, you know, once your son or daughter goes to college, you want them to come back and talk to you about the rest of life. And you want to be a resource for them when they run into, you know, life's ineb inevitable rocks in the road. Sure. And if, if you're very judgmental and you're, have one idea of who they're supposed to be and you're running headlong against who they want to be, it'll make it harder after they leave home to yeah. have the kind of relationship you want to have. So um, how about the grades? Um, what type of grades do colleges look for at the certain levels? So you want to take uh, students, you want to take the hardest classes you can take, the most challenging courses you can take, and you want to do really well in them choice between, you know, the admissions officers always say, um, you know, if they're asked the question, should I take the harder course or take, you know, should I take the harder course or get an A? And the answer is yes. You should take the harder course and get the A. So, uh, you know, college is a time of challenging yourself. So you want to show, you know, learn, flex those muscles in high school, learn how to use them. Great. Now, you, um, you said to me at, uh, uh, before the show started that uh, you wrote a book. Do you want to you explain to people out there the book? And so the book is called Write Out Loud. And uh, the premise is that using, telling stories out loud, you can really enhance your writing, not just for college admissions, but for, uh, you know, job search, emails, blogs, every, every time you want to connect with people and make a case for who you'll be in the future based on who you are and what you've done in the past. Uh, storytelling creates that bridge. So the book was written for an imaginary student in Idaho who could never get to one of our courses. At the time we didn't have online courses so now anybody anywhere can take our courses. And um, you know it, it, it's designed to really start um, sophomore year or junior year and start exploring all the facets of a young person that come together in the college process and then all the things that you engage once you get to college and get to be an adult on your own for the first time. And could they find the book at your website? You can find the book at our website. You can find the book online. You can find it at Barnes & Noble. Yeah, right out loud. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, what are some of the, what are some of the uh, important aspects that students should look at when, when looking at a college? So I think the most important thing is being really honest with yourself about how you learn. The number one factor in college success is class size. So the smaller the classes, the better most students will do. Hmm. Most students haven't had big lecture classes in high school and don't know how to navigate them. The pace is much faster than most high schools. So, um, you know, the, the most important thing, the most important part of a college visit is to go to classes, see what the classes are like. And then I would explore different, different paths through college, different majors, different interdisciplinary programs. Uh, and a major is really different from a high school subject. You know, a high school subject, it gets taught to you and then you give it back. Right. But a major is, is, is sort of the edges of the road. And the, the road's pretty wide and you can make a lot of choices. Sure. So just understanding kind of different pathways through college, different... Um, you know, colleges are organized different ways. Some have core requirements. Some you can take anything. Uh, some have, you know, shared courses that everyone take. Really get a sense of how the academic programs are organized, uh, what kind of career services they have. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of things. So what a, um, I'm assuming then that there's a lot of colleges out there for, for somebody. I mean, there's, there's a college for everybody. There's nearly 4,000 of them in the United States. And a lot of good ones, you know, many good ones outside the United States too. So. So, so kids can really, you know, as long as they're researching, they can find a school that fits them. 
both academically, uh, musically, athletically, any anything. Yeah, there's really there's a college for everyone, and there's there's probably a college that everyone can get into, and there's probably a college that just about everybody can get a scholarship to, if you're clever and do your research and are prepared. Good. So we're coming to the end of our show. Um, usually what I ask my guests is, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents that have sons and daughters that are going through the process now and are at that age of you know starting to fill out applications and essays? What, what advice do you want to give them? So that's a great question. Uh, I would, I would urge parents to remember what it was like when they were in high school. And most people, it's not a time they would go back to. It was very stressful that going from being a child to being an adult is, uh, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough period. And to use your memory to have empathy for the journey that your child's having, don't create more stress. If your child is you know, freaking out and can't take their AP exams for some reason. Um, maybe it's a sign from the gods, you know? Like, I, I wouldn't keep pushing if the kid is already really pressurizing themselves. Um, so love them, listen to them, and tell them who you are. You know, just l like let them know that you're a human being and that you made mistakes and that you weren't always who you are today. Let them know that you had a process and that you tripped and fell and you learned things. I'd, I'd be honest with them. I'd be, uh, yeah, I'd be vulnerable and honest and let them know that you're a human right. being too. Well, great. Thank you very much for coming to the show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Anthony. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.